Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Well, welcome everyone to Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. I'm so excited that you're joining us this evening. My name is Carrie Pickett. I'm the Vice President here with Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College, and I get to be your host for this evening. So welcome. We have a great guest minister this evening. You're gonna be super blessed by him. I even have some stories about him that uh, I, he can you know, pay me to not tell. And so it's gonna be an awesome evening tonight. So, But Tuesday Night Live Bible Study, it is live, which means that we get to interact with you and we're so excited about that. Whatever forum that you are watching on, whether it's Facebook or anything like that, go down to the chat section and that's where you can actually interact with us by sending us questions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take time at the end. Um, we're gonna have about 30 minutes here of ministry and teaching and then we're going to have about 15 minutes or so of Q&A. And so what we'll do is you send in your, your Qs and we'll give you the As, we'll give you some answers. And so that's gonna be a super blessing. If you're watching, say, on YouTube or any other thing, what you can do tonight is as also the way you can send in questions, go to livequestions at awmi.net. You can send those questions in. We have people taking that with your emails. As also, if you are someplace and you're not able to get to your computer, but you're watching, say, on your phone, then you can also text us 719-212-2555. You'll see it there on the screen. So just even as we're ministering tonight, send in your questions. We would love to interact and whatever we don't get to tonight, then you're going to also want to go to Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook page because on that, what we do is every Tuesday afternoon, we do a Q&A roundup of all the best questions, questions that maybe we didn't get to or we want to delve into more every week. And uh, Greg, uh, Greg Moore, Barry Bennett, Rick McFarland, they're three of our great teachers here at Karis Bible College. They take time to answer those questions. And so you'll want to go to do that because again, not just Tuesday questions do we answer, but every single day we have a live Bible study. So Mondays and Fridays, we have Karis Live Bible Studies at 10 o'clock in the morning, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 p.m., and then Wednesday morning, bright and early at 7. So we enjoy, enjoy having you be a part of that. We were just in Dallas, uh, Mike and I, with Andrew, and we met so many of you that are part of our live Bible study family. It was great to meet you. We love the fact that you're watching and being so blessed by this ministry. When you do call our prayer ministers, that's another way that you can be blessed by the ministry. Not only uh, when you get prayer, because obviously they're there to pray with you, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's something we just started here beginning of November. So every hour of every day of the week, we are available to you and we love that. We're gonna pray with you, speak the word over you, uh, pray in agreement. You're gonna see some amazing things happen. And when you call, you can ask them what other resources we have in the ministry because we have thousands upon thousands of resources, books, tapes, CDs, extra material, plus over 200,000 hours of free material. 200,000 hours. That's amazing, you guys. That's how good the word is. That's how rich and how deep it is. We have so much material. We would love for you to check that out. And so please be a part of that. Also, um, every Tuesday we give a giveaway. And that means that if you sign up for our Bible study notes, and especially on Tuesday, it's the only night we do this, but Tuesday night Bible study, we always have notes. And so the way you can sign up to get those notes is go to awmi.net slash Bible study. And what we do is whoever speaking, whether it's Andrew or other guest ministers, we're going to send you their notes so they can continue to go through them, be blessed, read those scriptures. And so we're going to have those notes for you today. And if you sign up and when you do, we enter into a drawing and then we always pick a winner. So last week, Dr. Jerry Williamson with Go To Nations was our guest and it was phenomenal. He talked about the Great Commission. I would encourage you to check that out on our archives with Live Bible Study. But he had a free giveaway called The Pulse of a Nation. It was his book, incredible book. And so Camilla Jones, you won that. So Camilla, we're gonna get that out to you. And tonight, as I introduce our special guest, we also have one of his books that we're gonna give away. And so you're gonna want to sign up for those Bible study notes to have the opportunity to be 
be able to win that. And so lastly, just really quick, um, check out uh, our next production, our next event here at Karis Bible College is our uh, Heart of Christmas production. You're going to want to visit us. We are literally digging up the ground to lay more wire for more uh, electricity to put up more lights for you. So it's going to be an amazing, spectacular event. So come see the campus and also see our Heart of Christmas, which is our Christmas production. Super powerful. It will change your life. So I encourage you to check that out. Heart of Christmas. Uh, uh, go to awmi.net slash events where you can get tickets and come do that. So, all right. I want to jump into our special guest minister uh, that is here tonight, uh, Greg Fritz. So Greg Fritz, I've known Greg since he was... Oh, goodness. Since I was 10, oh, 11, I was probably yeah. 12 or 13, you were 12 or 13. <laughs> so I was super young. He used to come to our hometown and uh, do camp meetings. And that's when we did like a whole week yeah. of camp meetings and a whole week. And so I really, in a huge part of my life, was mentored um, by Greg. And it has been a tremendous privilege to sit under his ministry and the word of his ministry. And it changed my life as a teenager. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And now he is one of our guest ministers and a regular teachers here at Karis Bible College. And the students love you. And when you're in town, we try to capture him for everything possible, healing school, live Bible study, churches in town, snag him up. So he is a, a great commodity. We love uh, the word that comes out of you, Greg. And so I'm really excited. And tonight, one of his books is uh, Living with No Regrets. Mm, this is awesome. Get ready for your future by getting over your past. I think a lot of you would need this book, but if you haven't signed up for Bible study notes, that's a way you can win it. But also if they wanted to get this book, how would they connect with you to get your resources. Yeah, they can go to my website, gregfritz.org. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, you know, since I've been hanging around Andrew, <laughs> a lot of my stuff is free. Yay. So we really don't, we really break even on our product now. That's awesome. Thanks to Andrew. Amen. <laughs> we don't make a profit, on, but uh, the book's not free, but there's a lot of free stuff on mine That's as awesome. well because uh, we, we love to get the word out. Amen. So our ministry has been growing uh, because of our association with, with your ministry, with Andrew, and yeah. we're on Gospel Truth TV, which, which is a gift to the world. Yeah. Gospel Truth TV really is a gift to the world from Andrew Womack, and it's changed my ministry, Amen. but I know it's changing lives all over because uh, of the amount of word that goes forth on that network. Yeah, and you have, you, you're on there every day of the week. Yeah, every day. Yeah, so for those of you that maybe we sometimes will mention it, sometimes we'll forget, but gospeltruth.tv, it is our internet-based television and Andrew and friends, tons of great ministers that are on there. So you're going to get solid word when you go there and you're going to be able to see Greg and then all, any archives. If you want to binge watch yeah, Greg Fritz, true. you, you can, can binge watch Greg Fritz. Which is awesome. It's better than Netflix. <laughs> it's better than Netflix. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, what do you have to share with us this evening? Well, I have been studying and creating a lot of uh, material on the subject of faith. And so I thought I would talk about that Amen. just a little bit, hit some of the high spots, bring out some points. And you're free to jump in. I know last time we, we <laughs> did this, I, I really enjoyed our interaction. So uh, you're free to jump in at Thank any you. point. Um, but I wanted to teach on the subject of faith. And as I've studied it, especially in the last year, two years, it's just like I realized, you know, we need to walk by faith more now than ever. It's so important that the Amen. church walk by faith, live by faith, fight the good fight of faith. And if you're going to be happy in a world that is so unstable and things are changing so fast, you, you just are going to benefit so much by living the faith life and Amen. exercising faith principles in your life. And so I want to just share uh, a few uh, thoughts tonight that I believe will help. It's helped me. I want to take you to Luke chapter 17. And this is when the apostles came to Jesus. And this seems to be the reaction that you see a lot when you teach on faith or the subject of faith. People agree uh, with it. They mm -hmm. understand that it's important that, that we need to walk by faith, that faith is, is necessary but many times they feel like they just don't have any or they don't have enough. So the disciples must have been feeling the same way in Luke chapter 17, verse 5. And the, and the apostles said to the Lord, 
increase our faith? That is just such an interesting question. Obviously, they didn't feel like they had enough. They felt like they needed more. And, and let me just say this. Anytime the enemy gets you to feel like you need something you don't have, you need to do something you, don't, you can't do, or you need someone to do something for you that's just not there. In other words, put you in a box where there's no help, there's no hope. That's a lie from the enemy. Amen. And to think that you don't have faith or you can't live by faith is a lie. You're a believer. Everybody's capable of believing God. Amen. And in these days, it's more important than ever before that we trust God, not just for salvation, but in every area of life, we can trust the Lord and literally have peace and calmness and assurance in our soul, no matter what goes on in the world. You know, and I love this thought that we don't have to accept the fact that just because things are changing globally, that maybe my life's not going to be what I thought it was going to be. Maybe I can't do what I thought I was going to do. We don't have to settle for that. We serve a God who changes not. His promises are still true. His word and His will for you has not changed. Your future, as far as God is concerned, has not changed. You can be all that God's ever wanted you to be. And, and you can, and really that is determined not by our world, not by our government. That's between you and God. And if we'll walk by faith, man, we can see things uh, that, you know, that, that, that are impossible otherwise. So the disciples said, give us more faith. We, we just feel like we need more faith. And Jesus said this. He said in verse 6, if you have faith as a mustard seed... You can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots, be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now, before we, you know, get distracted by the mustard seed, the mulberry tree, just on the surface, this is what Jesus is saying. You don't need more faith. You need to use the faith you have. Mm -hmm. And that is the one thought that I want to get to tonight. That was his answer. He said, if you had faith as a mustard seed... He said that because a mustard seed was the smallest of all seeds. And there you have your 12 apostles. Even Thomas would have admitted that he had at least a mustard seed worth of faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys had left home. They were following Jesus. They knew he was the Messiah. They believed that. They were actually exhibiting the, the, the uh, principles of faith. So they all had what they would at least consider a mustard seed. So Jesus is saying, you don't need more. If you just had any faith at all, you could say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots, cast into the sea, and it would obey you. So I just want to encourage you tonight, use your faith. Begin to walk by faith and, and make faith choices in your life. Don't wait for some kind of feeling. Faith is more of a choice than a feeling. Mm -hmm. And you, if you're a Christian right now, you do have faith. You have the measure of faith. You can walk by faith. We are not an inferior generation. We are not unable to believe like the disciples believed, like the early church believed. We have the same capability. And I just want to tell you, you are a faith person. You are a believer. Believing is what you do. Jesus carried this theme right through his, his ministry. And I want to bring up a few points to show you that not never not one time did Jesus look at someone and say you know what you you could be effective but you just don't have enough faith you know go sit over there you you don't have enough faith you you're going to have to go to bible school you're going to have to read the right books you're going to have to do some time before you can really do anything significant he never told anybody that That's right. in fact he was just the opposite i'll give you one example peter Remember when Jesus was walking on the water, and, and, and I believe this is Matthew 14, and uh, the, the disciples were going across the, 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 the Sea of Galilee in the boat, and Jesus came walking on the water. And it's, it's just so amazing to me that, uh, that, you know, that Peter stepped up and said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come and I'll come. Now, we know the story. <laughs> If you'd have been really care, you know, careful and, and, and real nurturing and afraid to really, it, it, it would have been really easy to say, now, Peter, you're not ready for this. This will not end well. 
it is me, but just stay where you are. I'll be there in just a second. If you'll, you know, you can walk on water maybe someday, but not today. This is not a good day. Jesus would never, ever squelch anybody's faith. You know what Jesus said. He said, come. He knew how this would end. But Jesus is so interested in us stepping out of the boat, stepping out on the word, doing things that we've not done before, that rather than say, Peter, play it safe, he said, come. I just love that. Yeah. You will never see the Lord telling anybody, don't, you're not, you don't have enough faith. You just don't have enough. If he would have ever told anybody that, it would have been here. Because you know what happened. Peter got out of the boat. He walked on the water for just a few steps. And then it says he saw the wind and the waves boisterous, and he realized you can't walk on water when it's windy. <laughs> and so he began to doubt. Because you can walk on it when it's Well, still. if it's calm, of yeah. course, everybody knows. <laughs> it's got to be calm to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so so he, he began to sink. Jesus reached out and saved him. But the point is, and, and, then, and then his response is so telling. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, good boy, you, you, you actually got out of the boat. Nobody else got out of the boat. Aren't you? He said, Oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? He didn't say, you just didn't have enough to do this. He said, you could have done it. You didn't have to doubt. And that's the message. Amen. We don't have to doubt. Sometimes we, we choose to doubt. But faith is always an option for us as the children of God. When the wind is blowing and the waves are boisterous and the economy is unstable and things are changing around us, we don't have to doubt. We can believe God in the midst of the storm. In fact, as we learn to walk in faith and choose to walk by faith in our lives, we can actually be the calm in the midst of the storm. We can be the ones that are changing the things around us by faith, through faith, through the decision to believe God. I'll give you another example in, in Mark chapter 11. This is another case where Jesus could have you know, he could have really, um, it could have come out a whole different way. But in Mark chapter 11, verse, let's go back to this uh, fig tree. I believe it's verse 20. Let me see. Let's go back to verse um, 12, where this all starts. Mark eleven twelve. Now, the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. This is Jesus. And he's and he seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves. He went to see if perhaps he could find something on it. When he came, he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you forever again. And his disciples heard it. So, you know, the picture Jesus spoke to a tree. Nothing really happened at that moment. But they saw Jesus speak to this tree. Then you fast forward to Mark 11 and chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 20, and it says, Now in the morning as they passed by, this would be the next day, they saw the tree dried up from the roots. Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered away. He was impressed. Anybody would be impressed. It's Jesus' reaction that just blows me away. Jesus could have said, I told you I was the Messiah. You see what I did to that tree. I can do more than that. I have a lot of ability, Peter. You need to stick with me. You need to keep believing in me. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus completely turned it around. That's right. He didn't say, I'm something, Peter, and one day, maybe if you keep following me, you can do something. Right now, you're pretty much worthless. But one of these days, that was not his idea. That was not his message to Peter, and that's not his message to us. Notice what Jesus did say. Now, get the picture. Jesus had just cursed the fig tree, and it had died. Peter was impressed. Jesus looked at Peter and said this. He said in verse 22, have faith in God. He didn't say, watch what I do. You're, you're going to be amazed at what I do next. No, he turned it around and said, you, Peter, you have faith in God. Now, the context is Peter is impressed because Jesus spoke to a tree. The next verse is even more astounding. Jesus, knowing the situation, turned and looked at a mountain much bigger than a tree. In other words, Peter would have been blown away if Jesus had said, you know what, if you speak in faith, you too could curse a tree. Mm -hmm. But that's not what he said. He said, you see that mountain over there? He said, whosoever, 
He didn't even say, this is just for people that I pick. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in their heart, but believe those things which he saith, he will have whatever he says. In other words, he's saying, Peter, you can do this. You're, I didn't leave you behind. This isn't something that I'm doing just to show you how great I am. Faith is within everyone's reach. That's what's so important about faith is that anybody can do this. If you're a Christian today, you know how they say that, that, um, that people use only 10% of their brains? You know, <laughs> scientists have told us. Well, it's possible that we even use less <laughs> of our capability when it comes to faith. And that's what Jesus was constantly trying to encourage people is, you can do this. You can believe this. Peter's walking on the water and Jesus said, you didn't have to doubt. I don't care how much, how big the waves are or how hard the wind is blowing. You didn't have to choose doubt. You did, but you didn't have to. That's good. Then Jesus, then Jesus, you know, when they all got in the boat in Luke 4 and they were, uh, Luke, Luke 14, I believe. Anyway, they're going across the lake and the storm arose and the boat is sinking and Jesus is asleep. And the disciples were all afraid and they thought, let's wake up the Lord. I mean, we're going to die. I mean, they, and they, they literally thought they were going to die. Yeah. And so I, you could hear this conversation, mm -hmm. you know, should we wake him up or should we let him die in his sleep? And it's like, well, let's, <laughs> let's wake him up. He, he might want to see this. So they woke him up. They said, Master, Master, we are perishing. That was their statement. We're dying. And Jesus stood up on the bow of the ship. It's amazing to me, too. And he said, peace be still. And the storm ceased. That's right. The disciples are like, wow, you know, he can kill a tree. He can calm a storm. And Jesus turned to them and said, where's your faith? And they're like, what? We're, we're just glad we're still alive. Yeah, okay. well, you're setting the bar too low. <laughs> he said, why would you doubt? Why do you get on a boat with me and think that it's going to end in disaster? Yeah. Boy, this is so applicable today. Mm. You know, we have people that we've been in church and we've been in meetings for 20, 30 years. We've heard the sermons. We know the goodness of God. We know the character of God. And one pandemic comes along and people think it's all over with. We're all going to die. Life will never be the same again. Don't buy into that. Don't believe that. Your life is still on track. You are still in the hands of God. You still have a covenant with Almighty God, and He has not changed. Now, He may be asking, where's your faith? Mm -hmm. He may be asking that, but, you know, we can respond and say, you know what, Lord, maybe I didn't weather that last storm very well. I might have gone through it kicking and screaming, but I'm going to do better for the next one. I am ready to believe. I am ready to stand on the Word of God and do the will of God and believe that God is going to take me to the other side. And really that was all he was expecting from them was that, that they would at least believe that if I say let's go to the other side, we're going to make it. And I'll tell you, I believe that. I, I believe that our, our lives are... are, are in the hands of God, that we're protected by God, Amen. we're provided for by God, okay. that, that we have a course that we're on, that we can, we have a right to run our course and to finish our course by, with faith and joy. Nothing's changed as far as heaven is concerned. But our response as Christians should be, mm -hmm. I believe God. I do not doubt. I believe. I'll give you one more and then I want Carrie to jump in here. But, but, and this is a great one. Um, in Mark chapter 5, there was a man named Jairus, and his daughter was at home and she was sick. Almost at the, she was at the point of death. And Jairus, he just went, he knew, he, he just knew one thing. He knew that if Jesus would pray for my daughter, she would live. Mm. Now, you know, nobody, he didn't take a faith seminar to come to that conclusion. He decided that. And, you know, faith is a choice. I don't know about you, but I want to make the faith choice. I want to choose, choose faith and, and be happy in the midst of turmoil. I want to, I want to know that my, my uh, uh, finances are secure, my future secure. Just take the step of faith and believe God. And so Jairus, he found Jesus in Mark chapter 5, and he says, Master, my daughter's at the point of death, but if you'll come pray for her, she will live. Isn't that powerful? That's good. He knew it would work. Yeah. So Jesus 
starts that direction. He's going to go to Jairus' house, just like Jairus wanted. And, he, and that's the thing I love about Jesus. You know, you'd think that Jesus' schedule would be packed full. If you're the Messiah and, and you're only here three and a half years to do ministry, you would think every single day you would have appointments from beginning to end. But it, it seemed as if, if you read the Gospels, that Jesus started every day the same. He'd go out and preach and teach, and he waited for somebody to believe. He looked for faith. And on this day, it was Jairus. And I like to say, today it could be you. We don't have to wait for God to come to us. Right. We can go to God and say, Lord, I believe. I trust your word. It's true in my life. It's true in my future. I am not going to be afraid. I am not going to fret. I'm not going to live in fear or dread. I serve Almighty God. And so they're going to Jairus' house. The woman with the issue of blood, she touched the hem of his garment and it delayed them. Well, during that delay... People came from Jairus' house and they said, Lord, uh, they said to Jairus, don't bother the Lord. She's dead. No reason to, to go there now. You know, that's like saying, not even God can help you now. <laughs> not even God can do anything about this now. Mm -mm -mm. So Jesus, this is what's so along this same theme. Jesus turned to Jairus and he said, don't be afraid, only believe. Yeah. Well, believe what? She's dead. I mean, she's not sick anymore. She's dead. Jesus didn't say, Jairus, you had enough faith to believe that I could pray for her and heal her. But now it's way beyond your ability. Mm. Just sit back and let me take care of it. That's not what Jesus said. He said, Jairus, you don't have to doubt. Even now, only believe mm. as if. Jairus had that capability as if Jairus had enough faith, as if that wasn't an issue. And you know, it never was. Each and every time Jesus pointed out someone's lack of faith, it's because they chose not to believe. It's not because they couldn't. We need to make the faith choice That's good. in this day and time more than ever before. We, there are good. things going on in our world that are being amplified by the powers that be to try to scare you, mm -hmm. to paralyze you, to push you in a corner and tell you life is not going to be like it ever was again, yet your life is over, your future has been robbed. Don't believe it. Our future is just as bright as it ever was. Amen. God Almighty has not changed. That's you know, good. we can't help it that we were born to live in 2021. That's not my fault. Mm -hmm. This is it. Mm -hmm. You get one chance. This is it. Let's make the most of it. Let's believe God. Let's believe for the best. Let's believe in overcoming. Let's believe in peace in the midst of a storm. Let's be part of the answer, Amen. not part of the problem. And there are other instances. I mean, the Bible just goes on and on where Jesus is encouraging people to believe. And not once, and I'll yeah, turn it good. back, but, but not once. Did Jesus ever say, you just don't have enough faith? Just c come back later. Go, go read some books. Go listen to some sermons and come back later. But, you know, we kind of do that. We kind of feel that way. I'm not ready for this. This is too much for me. I need to go pre prepare. I don't yeah. have enough. But, no, mm -hmm. you do have the, the capacity to make the faith choice, to believe God. That's good. Man. Okay, so... Uh, Pastor Greg can, I guess, not pastor, but Greg can um, minister in this all day long. Yeah. And I'll just say, you actually have a resource for people, right? Yeah. In fact, I, I, you know, Andrew got me into the, to the TV <laughs> program and, and it's just caused me to create products like never. I, I mean, I've made so many products that, and a lot of them aren't even released yet. I've yeah. been making stuff that I don't have time to release, but this one, I'm very excited about. It's called Understanding Faith. Yeah. And it's five messages that really encapsulate uh, the, the message of faith, what faith is, mm -hmm. how to release your faith. And it's five messages because I, uh, be, only because I tried to get it into four and I, I just couldn't. It, it was too much information. <laughs> but uh, this series, I, I um, am going to offer it to your audience today for free. If they'll go to my website, you can download all five of these uh, in MP3 format 
absolutely free. There's a code on the on the screen, but if you go to my website, uh, there's a tab. We created a, a live Bible study tab with this series. You could just tap that link really nice. and uh, enter the code FAITH21, but it will answer a lot more questions than, of course, than I was able to do tonight. Amen. Well, um, what I love about the questions, and you guys have sent some great questions in, so thank you very much. Um, that it kind of continues your teaching. So I want you guys to listen up. We got some great questions. Wait, we already have questions? We already have questions. Oh, we have like three pages of questions. Oh, I didn't know. Yes. That. Okay. So um, can we can we do that? Yes. So that we can. Oh, yeah. um, so here's the thing. Um, uh, Emma here asked this on chat. She says, is it faith that makes you step out of the boat or is it faith just stepping out of the boat? Is faith the same thing as taking a risk? Oh, that's a great question. That's a really good question. And, and, and really, the way I like to say it is this, it's certainly not a feeling. If you think you're ever going to feel like stepping out of the boat, <laughs> that's not what faith is. And that's why people ask the question, God, I need more faith. Lord, increase my faith. Because they're wanting mm -hmm. to feel something. Yeah. Some of the biggest decisions I've ever made in my life, faith decisions, there was no feeling. I mean, if the feeling was there, it was negative. Mm. So, so I would yeah. say this, to answer that question, it's more, and this will answer both of them, it's obedience more than anything else. Obedience. That's good. And everybody can obey. Yeah. That's excellent. Okay, so Jane and B asked this on YouTube. Faith without action is dead. How can we distinguish between faith and doing works? Well, it would be the motive. If, if, and that's a great question. I mean, if you're doing works to try to get something, then, then that's not going to work. If you're doing works mm -hmm. to earn something, if you think if I'm good enough and nice enough and kind enough and giving enough, one of these days I can walk on water. That isn't how it works. Mm -hmm. Faith is totally based on a promise from God. It produces works, but 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 it it doesn't it doesn't it you're not earning anything yeah. by doing the works. That's good. That's awesome. Okay, so um, Tony S is on Facebook. He said, "I am discipling a sister in the Lord who's walking by sight more than by faith. How can I exhort her and show her how to walk by faith?" Oh, that's great. You know, um, in my series. I put some things in my series, some things that faith is not. In other words, in trying to define faith, what it is, mm -hmm. we show you what it's not. And one of them is it's not hope. The other one is it's not seeing. And we use, there's a whole message on that, but we use primarily the message of Thomas. Thomas said, except I see mm -hmm. the nail holes and put my hand in his side, I won't believe. Well, there's a lot of people like that. Yeah. They want to see it and then believe it. And so you need to teach her the difference. Uh, we believe in God and we've never seen God. We believe in forgiveness and you can't really see your sins being forgiven. Some of the greatest things in the world that we believe we've mm -hmm. never seen. In fact, it's the faith that, that believes without seeing that causes us to rejoice with joy unspeakable and full, full of glory. That's what we rejoice, the faith that we have, that we haven't actually seen. That's good. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so Diane asked this. We had a couple of questions on healing because when it comes to faith and healing, this is really where there's a lot of questions. So I, Diane on Facebook asks this. She says, when I read in the Bible that God watches over his word to perform it, it adds to my faith. But I'm still living with chronic pain. Then I read that God sees 1,000 years as a day. Maybe I'm expecting too much? Well, this is, uh, you know, in healing and... and, and um I love Andrew's example of healing. He's, mm -hmm. to me, he's the example for divine healing. Mm -hmm. um, and and his, his journey, it's, it's harder to believe in something when you are facing chronic pain. I'm not gonna, I, I, I'm not gonna argue with that. But the principle's the same. At some point, you have to let the Word of God become more real to you mm -hmm. than you're feeling. And in, in a case like that, when it's staring you in the face day and night, I would just say double up on the Word, continue to feed on the Word, and, and focus on that. We look not at things which are seen, which would be the pain. Yeah. We look at the things which are not seen, which would be God's promises. 
And so our focus has got to change. And if you're in a battle like that, mm. I do want to encourage you. Don't give up. Just focus on the word and don't get anxious and feel like you're a failure. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I was preaching during the whole pandemic thing is not, Psalm 91 says, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just take that in a very real way. Let's say that you're in your dwelling and you get sick. Let's say you get COVID and you have all the symptoms and you test positive. Does that mean the words failed, you failed, that, that it's all for nothing, that is when it comes to healing, you just don't have any success? No, he didn't say you'd never have symptoms, you'd never have a battle. We believe that no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. If a plague shows up, that's when the fight starts. Yeah. That's when we really double up our efforts. You know, I have burglar alarms and ring devices on my mm -hmm. house. There's all kinds of things to let me know who's coming in. Good. And But that alone doesn't keep somebody from coming in if they come in. If they get past my ring devices and my alarm on the front door, they got to confront me. That's the real battle because it's not really my, my alarm system that's going to keep them out. Ultimately, it's me. And, and you can get that way with your own faith. Oh, you could say, you know what? I may have symptoms. They may have gotten past the first, second line of defense, but the mm -hmm. fight's just begun. I will not back down. I will not give up. I will not stop. And in that case, you win. That's good. Well, I was talking to Andrew today about, about his experience with healing. And you probably know this story, and I had him retell it. But it, it just, it's vivid. It, it, it explains what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But when he, when he and Jamie were just starting out, and they didn't have any money, and he had a full-time job, and they were believing God for everything, he got sick. I mean, deathly ill with symptoms. And they couldn't afford for him to miss a day's work, not one day. So he said he stayed up all night. And he stood on the word. He was so weak. Mm -hmm. He was on the floor. I was asking him because the, the statement is he pushed the Bible around on the floor with his nose. Mm. I said, why did you push it with your nose? He said, I couldn't stand up. He mm -hmm. said, and if I got in bed, I'd go to sleep. So I got on the floor and I, he said, I stood on the word all night long. Man, that's the kind of, that's, that's somebody that says, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Well, it came. Well, the uh -huh. fight just now started. I will that's not good. quit until I am victor and every symptom's gone. When we have that attitude, then, then you can live in a divine health like Andrew did for all these years. It didn't come without challenges. And if you're facing a challenge, don't be disheartened. This is the natural, what, what kind of uh, challenge, what kind of faith would we have if we didn't have challenge? Why do you need mountain moving faith if you never face a mountain? Why do you need giant killing faith if you never face a giant? That's right. This is what we do. Yeah. And, and just because it shows up and it's real and, and, they, and they do the tests and they say, yep, you got it. That doesn't mean it's over. That means it's just begun. That's really good. Man, I was taking some notes on that. That awesome. I like that analogy of even though it may come into my house just because, well, it came to the door, so I have to let it in. Yeah. Would you oh, do I got that with symptom. a thief? Yeah, yeah, I got a symptom, so I have to let it in. It was like I read a... Um, uh, something it was during Halloween. Guy opened the door, and you know, two adults are there standing all dressed, you know, trick or treat. But they pulled a gun on him, man. He, and he went after them because he had kids inside. Yes. So it's just like, oh well, they came to the door. I right. guess I have well, to let it I in. I guess it's in now. I guess I've lost. No, no, it ain't it over. Not come into are you my kidding? door. <laughs> I love that, man. That's so good. Okay, so Leah on chat asked this. She says, can we keep our faith by meditation? I know faith comes by hearing the word. So how can we keep our faith activated while going to work or school? Well, that's a great, that's the answer is meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I tell you, I've been telling my audience this for, for a long time now, mm -hmm. but especially in the last year, you're getting bombarded with bad news from every direction. And, and, and it's getting worse and it's more amplified. And now to make matters worse, we have all these devices. We're wired to information and we're getting bad information, bad news all day long, mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. You've got to turn that around. You can't expect to be strong in faith when all you feed on is all this negative news. It has awesome. the wrong effect. It would be like eating junk food your whole life and then trying to run a marathon. You, you, we need to change it. 
take, take your devices, your phone and your iPads and, and your smart TVs and begin to fill them up with word based programs so that you and then when you go to work, when you go home, uh, when you're you know, doing things and you have time, uh, when you're at the gym, when you're walking, taking a break, listen to the word. I, you would be amazed. We did. In fact, I call my, my program on purpose. I call it good news. Yeah. We've got plenty of bad news. <laughs> my program's good news. Who can't use more good news? But I gave yeah. the, my viewers a challenge. I said, you listen to my program, 20 episodes in the next 30 days and tell me if that doesn't change your outlook on life. That's and good. many of them did it. We got many great testimonies. Mm. And it's not a heroic thing. Yeah. You begin to put this, put the word in and you start feeding on the right thing. That's good. And you're going to end up having right results. It's not a mystery. Mm -hmm. That's good. So Tony asked this. Um, he said, if we have the measure of faith, the same measure for all Christians, how come some brothers like Andrew and Greg or sisters like Carrie seem to have a greater measure of faith than the average Christian? <laughs> well, I, I was actually talking to Andrew about that today, and it's the mm -hmm. same thing. I said, did you have to pray and decide if you had enough faith to push your Bible around on the floor with your nose? Did you pray about that? Did you ask God to give you more? He goes, no. I said, so you just made that choice. And he goes, yeah. He said, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't, I, I had to go to work. I couldn't go to sleep. I had to fight and I made that choice. Well, yeah. that's what separates, you, you know, you talk about, well, does he have more? Well, I guarantee you he's exercised it more. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you another example. The, uh, mm -hmm. he had a, a real bad sore on his ear. Yep. And it, it was, it was horrible. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I remember that and it was there for six years, mm -hmm. but he believed God. Well, it would have been so easy to just give up and say, just cut that off or whatever. But, but, but he, and he I don't think he felt like he had more yeah. uh, faith or didn't check that or go check his faith level to see if he's ready for this. You just make a choice wherever you are. Whatever you're facing, whether it's a storm, a giant, a mountain, mm. that's what I see. Jesus is saying, just do it. Believe. Take the step. Speak the word. Stand on the word of God. And that's what Andrew said he did with his ear. He said he spoke to it nearly every day. He spoke to the, his ear constantly uh, and told, told it, it he's healed. And now there's not even any. There's, yeah. That's Amen. Amazing. Oh, that's good. Okay. So Isaac on YouTube asked this, said, how can we know if we can start believing in something God didn't speak to us directly? Like David put faith in God to beat Goliath without having God give him a specific word. Yeah, that's, um, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. That's the technical definition of how faith comes. However, the Holy Spirit can speak to you. Yeah. Uh, I went to Arkansas and I was sharing that today in, in school. I, I went to Arkansas. I had, I had the faith to go to Arkansas and to live there and to, and to do the will of God. And it's, I guarantee you that's not in the Bible because I looked. <laughs> I wanted to know. I didn't want to go. I said, <laughs> please let me go to Texas. And there's no scripture <laughs> that says go to Texas. There's no scripture that says go to Arkansas. But, but once the Lord speaks to you, uh, this is the definition we were told in Bible school. And I like this, but faith begins where the will of God is known. So you can find the will of God in his word. You can believe any scripture in the Bible that, that it's yours or something he speaks to you directly. Okay, and, and you can stand on that as well. That's good. Okay, so Samaya on YouTube asks this. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Jesus is the author and finisher, sustainer, perfecter of our faith. So does that mean Jesus controls our faith to an extent, especially when we're struggling with doubt? Well, and that's the, that's the whole point of this sermon is that, is that Jesus is not controlling us. Mm -hmm. He's encouraging us. You know, he did everything else. <laughs> That's, we talk about grace. Jesus paid for everything. Every enemy we had, everything that we couldn't do for ourselves, he did it. But he's not going to believe for us. 
And that's why he stressed that in the New Testament, in his ministry. He's stressing the fact that you, you're going to have to believe. You guys need to learn how to believe. You're not believing. I've done everything. I've left everything at your disposal, but you're going to have to believe. Yeah. And then when he was resurrected, he was really disappointed. It said he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart yeah. because they didn't even believe he was raised from the dead. So he was very, very careful to encourage them so he wasn't saying, I'm controlling it, and it's all up to me, He's saying, you need to make this choice, and I'll back you up. Oh, that's good. So our last question is, can an unbeliever be saved without faith? Well, we're saved by grace through faith, so I would say no. Mm -hmm. But I would say this right on the heels of that, every unbeliever can believe. That's the beauty of the gospel. It yeah. pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. So through the, the, the interaction of faith, God has put himself within everyone's reach because everyone can believe. Not everyone chooses to believe in Jesus, but they can. And yeah. so I would say, no, an unbeliever can't believe without faith, but they are capable of believing the gospel when they hear it. Yeah. And I remember um, being in Russia, we would have these young men in the drug rehab center just barely saved, you know, just barely spirit filled, but they'd start to get a hold of the word of God. And because they chose to believe the word mm -hmm. more than what they saw, what they felt or what kind of knowledge they felt they did or didn't have, they chose to believe. And we saw some supernatural miracles of these young men and women getting mm -hmm. healed of HIV and getting healed of sexually transmitted diseases. And God started restoring their families. I mean, incredible things yeah. to the point that some of those pastors would get offended that these young, immature Christians who had so much faith, but ultimately you can choose to believe the word and anything is possible. Well, it's so, it makes it so simple. I'll leave you with this. If you had two people come into a church, both unsaved, one of them gets saved mm -hmm. and the other doesn't, there's no mystery. It's not that God chose one over the other no. or one of them deserved it more than the other or one of them had suffered more than the other. It's really very simple. One of them chose to believe and the other didn't. Yeah. This makes it the kingdom even. It, it's, it's an equal opportunity access. Anybody can believe God and receive his best. So what about for people who, um, this is, I'll, I'm going to ask a question for you guys. Uh, what happens when you have faith for something, um, but yet it's, you're not seeing it come to pass. So what's wrong at that point? Is it just head knowledge? You're just parroting somebody else? What, when do you know that you really believe something and have faith versus just having a knowledge and you're trying, you're trying to convince your own heart to have faith? Yeah. It, you know, uh, sometimes we may rush through the process mm -hmm. and I talk about that, I think in this series, but there's this Proverbs 420, attend to my words, give ear to my sayings. Yeah. Let them, one of the translations says, let them penetrate your heart. Mm, that's good. And, and that would be the difference. Some, you can go through the motions, but it's just an intellectual exercise. Yeah. But when the word really does penetrate your heart, when I really got saved and I stood on Romans 10, 9, mm. You believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me that I did that. And it says, you shall be saved. And I got it. It's like, I'm saved. I'm mm -hmm. saved. I got it. No, from that point on, I never doubted it again. I never questioned it again. I never wondered because that word penetrated deep into my heart. That's good. And, yeah. and, and once that happens, you... It's like something else takes hold. Amen. So again, how can they get um, this Understanding Faith series? You can go to my website and we put a tab on the home page. Look for that and you can an download it to your computer Amen. in MP3 format. And I'd love for you to get this series. And we've got a lot of other things that are free there as well. Yeah, it says uh, the code FAITH21. FAITH21, so, yeah. So 21 for 2021. Yeah. 
you have faith for this year. So thank you guys for watching. If you need prayer, if you need someone to just agree with you, maybe you're standing for something healing or for family members, finances, anything that you're standing for and you're saying, hey, I need a scripture or I just need encouragement, please call our prayer line. We would love to pray for you. 719-635-1111. They would love to pray with you. And again, resources go to Greg Fritz. Ministries also check out Andrew's Ask. Our prayer ministers, what does Andrew have on faith? And they're going to direct you to a ton of resources that you can listen to. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We have tomorrow early morning Bible study at seven o'clock in the morning. Again, if you had other questions that didn't get answered, go to Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook page. Uh, hit like and so that when we go to answer more questions next Tuesday afternoon, you can find more of your questions being answered. So, well, thank you very much for being with thank us. You, it always Carrie. goes by so fast. I know you guys are blessed and you want to get more. So binge watch Greg Fritz, <laughs> gospeltruth.tv, 20 days and see if your outlook on life has not changed. Amen. So, amen. God bless you guys and we'll see you tomorrow. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.